My name is David Brown. Uh, this is my first YouTube video in a little while. I had been starting this when I realized it wasn't recording, which has happened quite a bit. Uh, this is an unboxing of a package I received from the Chicago Field Museum. Uh, this time I did have a pair of scissors instead of a screwdriver. Uh, now, the thing to know, you can order from the Chicago Field Museum store from any part of the country, probably other countries too. Uh, so if you want some of their stuff, uh, but you haven't been able to get to the museum, uh, you can try that. Now, here's the box. And here's the first thing that came out of it. It's a postcard with... Uh, obviously a diamond necklace f that they show is from South Africa, like most diamonds are, and you'll get geologists saying, raining all kinds of things about that, and there's a thank you on the back. Now, uh, when I was making my order, you have to get up to a minimum amount uh, to get free shipping, I ended up below that because there was an item I added uh, that they then admitted they didn't have, so there will really only be two items in this box, uh, but it is a good option, especially if you can get the free shipping. Now, here's the main thing in this box. It's a Quetzalcoatlus. He was coming out of the box. Uh, it's really a bit difficult to get him on camera. Now, you can see pretty easily that his head is a bit of a funny shape. It has an upturned bill looked at from the side, which a fair number of pterosaurs did have but probably something this big, it just wouldn't matter unless it was one of the filter-feeding pterosaurs like Pterodostro, which this was not. And if you look at it from above, you can still see it kind of skews to one side. Now that might have occurred in a few species, but again, something this big isn't really going to matter. It's really pretty common with stuffed toys, nothing to worry about. And there is definitely some bracing inside here. Uh, the total ring span is supposed to be two feet. And that certainly looks about right. Now, here is what I was really finding the most interesting thing. It's supposed to be a Tarbosaurus. Now, I've talked about this in an article I did that was on T-Rex, and that ended up be tying in with a video I did on what could kill a T-Rex. Tarbosaurus is the smaller relative of T-Rex. Some people have called it Tyrannosaurus batar. Uh, that was really something that died down quite a while ago. I think more something they were arguing about in the 90s, maybe into early 2000s. Now, as far as usage goes, you'll usually see Tarbosaurus referred to separately. And uh, what I've been really most interested in is just seeing if this matched the dimensions given. Online, it said this was about six inches long, but only one and a half inches high, uh, which would have been very small, even smaller than toy soldiers. Now, here you have the guy, and you, the Tarbosaurus, that is, and you can see what he's like. Uh, they make the head look a bit narrower, which is part of what sets Tarbosaurus and Tyrannosaurus apart, uh, though probably you wouldn't notice this much of a difference, except uh, with the juvenile. Now, we do have a lot of juvenile Tarbosaurs. 
Uh, some of them you really won't notice a difference if you're looking at it unless you know a few specific things, especially if it's still a juvenile and you're looking at the hip bones, you'll see places where they actually aren't fused. And usually they will say uh, that T-Rex was about 8 to 10 tons and Tarbosaurus was about 4.4 or 4.5 metric tons. I'm one of the ones who has strongly suspected that uh, they were really quite a bit bigger, even up to at least small to average size for a Tyrannosaurus, but it would be hard to prove anything much bigger than the 4.5 4 metric tons. Uh, and as I mentioned, we do have a lot of material on Tarbosaurus. Uh, at least up to the 90s and 2000s, if anything, we had more material on Tarbosaurus than Tyrannosaurus. So if you're starting to think of this as like a small or weird Tyrannosaurus, just remember we had a lot more Tarbosaur remains before we had nearly as much as we do now with Tyrannosaurus. That's especially if you're looking before and after we found Tyrannosaurus Sioux, which the Field Museum now has. Uh, so for the size of this thing, I already had a couple things for comparison, two or three. Uh, this is a Timmy Galaxy Laser Team astronaut, or a reissue of it. Now, he's already a bit smaller than you'll see with toy soldiers. The average modern toy soldier, like late 70s onward, will be a little over 2 inches, maybe 2.1, 2.5, no, 2.25 inches like 54, 55 millimeters. This is more like two inches exactly. And you can definitely see that the dinosaur is still taller than this astronaut. Uh, so at least at the head, it's taller. Uh, put it closer to the hip, it's still a bit taller, but the dinosaur that is, but not by a whole lot. And uh, this really would be about the proportions for a juvenile Tarbosaurus. Uh, the adults would have been maybe 10 feet tall. This would be more like 7 or 8 feet. So that che much checks out. Uh, there were also smaller Tarbosaurus or Tyrannosaurids, especially Allioramus. So you could also go with that as far as what this would be. Now, here's another thing. It's a smaller version of the Galaxy Laser Team Astronaut. It was actually released first. Uh, it's supposed to be about one and a half inches, which comes out as 35 millimeters. And again... Uh, this looks about right, if anything, closer to how an adult Tarbosaurus would have looked. Uh, yes, if, if you take this as six feet, he comes about up to the chest on the Tyrannosaurus, not quite to the hip, maybe three-fourths of the way to the hip, if you're looking at it there. A uh, funny thing about this, uh, they were actually, from what we figured out, issued before the Galaxy Laser Team sets, which I'm sure I'll do a video about eventually. These were from the late 70s. These were from the early 70s, maybe a little bit earlier. I've corresponded with people who just haven't been able to prove that either way. Uh, and he really does, at this scale, work a bit better if you're trying to do real dioramas with some of these creatures. 
smaller but not a lot smaller and of course having an astronaut with a Tyrannosaurus would be more like science fantasy but you can always make up your own thing uh, I've really thought about trying to develop fiction with the Galaxy Laser Team astronauts. Still haven't gotten that beyond very basic ideas. Uh, one more thing with this that's been criticized. You can see that they have the arms forward when now we know they were at least normally to the sides. And... Uh, this also means this is an earlier version of a Tarbosaurus, like maybe around 2010. Uh, it's from a company called Collect A, uh, and they supply a lot of stuff from museums or just online. Uh, they seem to have a newer one, though, a newer version of Tarbosaurus, though I'd say, if anything, this is a bit better. Now, here's something interesting for comparison. This is something pretty recent, but it's based on the 1980s, early 90s Dino Riders line. They call it Dino Riders, but they're really small-scale dinosaurs, and they come with uh, pretty small figures. The figures are still uh, really smaller or larger, rather, than they should be compared to the dinosaur, especially a sauropod like this. And the figures are scaled at about an inch tall. Here you can see this guy compared to the Tarbosaurus. Now this, if anything, is starting to make them look a little small. Uh, this guy comes up. He is supposed to be in a sitting down pose, but he comes up about halfway to the hip or even a little less than halfway uh it wouldn't be that out of scale to a full-size tyrannosaurus rex they were something like 12 feet at the hip some of them and some of the other species like giganotosaurus might have been a little taller and he could almost ride on the Tyrannosaur, that is the Tarbosaurus, of course. And all in all, this is a pretty nice one. Uh, there's some things that are already a little outdated. It's got the shrink wrap skull where you can see the openings or what we call fenestra in the skull. Uh, and it's got a little bit of the, what I call, slit or teardrop nostril. Though it's a small enough scale, it doesn't exactly stand out. It's probably better than some. It's a little elongated, but it's more round than not. So it's not too bad. And of course, there's whole the whole argument about whether Tyrannosaurus, Tarbosaurus, or others had feathers. Uh, really, Tarbosaurus was probably at the threshold where even if the basic ancestral form was feathers, they would have started losing them, like you'll see with hippos and rhinos, and up to the size of elephants. And this guy, the Quetzalcoatlus, Cotalus, is definitely worth it. I'd really have to go to a different place, find a different angle from the camera just to get this guy in the frame all the way. Uh, so I'm signing out in this video. I might take a little time before I post this uh, and may maybe put a little on my blog also about these guys. So for now, I'm ending this. And I definitely recommend, if you ever get the chance, go to the Field Museum.